It's the Zone Soccer Show, and it's been International Week, and we're lucky enough to be joined by a couple of former England internationals as well. Leon Sanderson, who played over 50 times for England and also played for the likes of Arsenal and Juventus, and former England centre-back Jonathan Woodgate, played for the likes of Leeds, Newcastle, and Los Blancos, Real Madrid. In the men's game, all the focus has been on the UEFA Nations League, over 50 matches played across Europe. Remember, if you do well in the Nations League, it can fast-track you to qualification for Germany 2024. But I guess more importantly, it is the final chance for international managers to have a look at their squad of players before the World Cup begins. That's less than two months away now. Don't forget the World Cup kicks off on November 20th. Uh, hi, Leanne. Hi as well to Jonathan Woodgate. Look, all the focus Morning. really is about England, isn't it? I mean, England have had a dismal, a terrible Nations League campaign so far. And they were beaten 1-0 by Italy last Friday in the San Siro. Uh, Jonathan, I'm going to start with you on this one. Uh, what do you make of the result and all the pressure now that's being heaped on Gareth Southgate? Let's let's go to the facts. It wasn't. I, I wouldn't say it was a great performance. The result wasn't great. I mean, that's not. It's no winning in five games off of Gareth Southgate's team. But I think everyone's jumping on the bandwagon that Gareth Southgate's not good enough for the job. He is. He's got us to a European final. He's got us to a World Cup semi final, and he's been outstanding. If you remember before before Gareth's time. England was a shambles, and he's brought the team together. He's brought the culture, the environment here, an England squad. And okay, at the minute they're going through a slight blip. That happens in management, and it's happening maybe at the wrong time for England. They've got a game today against against Germany, which is now turned into a huge, huge game. Leanne, look, we always look at the squad of players that England have, right? And everyone's compared it to that golden era that Jonathan Wilkins was part of. Um, when you see players like Tammy Abraham not getting any minutes and Bakayo Tomori not getting any minutes, those are the reasons, I guess, that a lot of people are questioning Gareth Southgate's tactic, right? Yeah, I think you're playing with fire a little bit when you start to play players that are not playing for their club. I've said this before, Jonathan will probably say the same thing. There's always going to be players that are manageable favour. They'll make excuses for certain players. They're not in form and that type of stuff. But at the same time, a manager will always pick who they want to pick. Now, for me, I wasn't really that concerned about the Nations League. You know, when it first started, no one really knew what it was about. No one really knew what it meant. You know, and a lot of the players, I feel like, weren't taking it as seriously as if it was a, you know, a tournament. But now we've got all these, like, 450 minutes without scoring a, a goal from open play. Like, those types of things. You start to worry because I wasn't concerned until the other day. And then you see the team selection. I'm a big fan of Ivan Tony. We spoke about it on the show many times. But why pick him if you're not even going to put him in the squad? And then you see tonight's squad against Germany. Trent Alexander-Arnold is not in the, 20, the squad of 23. Why? You know, you're playing the likes of Harry Maguire, who isn't playing any minutes at Manchester United. If you do that, you have to win. And that's my only worry. Going into a major tournament, you know, we're now less than two months from going to Qatar. I agree with Jonathan. Gareth Southgate ball. You know, the fans fell back in love with England again, didn't they? At Wembley, people weren't even going. The games, you know, they couldn't even, like, sell out the stadium. Whereas after the Euros, during the Euros, it was fantastic, the support. But... I just am mindful of the media just kind of really coming in, you know, like hounding out the players again because we don't want to go back 15, 20 years ago where the players had one bad game or a few bad games and the media come after them. But I think the way Gareth's managing the team right now, I think he's asking for trouble because he's picking players that are not in form. Tammy Abraham, it looks like he probably will go to Qatar, but he's not really played that much for England. So when people are saying, some people are saying, oh, we know what he can do. Do we know what he can do for England? He does it for Roma. But why pick Ivan Tony if you're not going to play him? Like, we're all waiting for him to play. I think he makes everybody have the faith that you will pick a player that's playing well and on form. But the likes of, you know, Harry Maguire, those types of players, they're not in form and they're playing and we're losing. Eric Dyer, I mean, is he better than Tamori? I know they played a three at the back, but still, like, for me, you have to play the best players. I just think you're playing with fire a little bit when you're picking players that are not in form and you lose. You, you go on to Tamori, I'm a huge fan of him. I think he's been absolutely outstanding since he, since he went to... AC Milan, and he needs that chance in England shirt, because at the minute, like you say, Leanne, regarding Maguire, what's he going to do when he goes to the World Cup and he has to play three games in, in nine days and he hasn't been playing all season? That's going to be the thing. OK, you might play one or two, but that third game, then if, if they get through the last 16 and there's quarters and semis, how are, they going to, how are they going to go about that? And I guess another thing, Leanne, look, I mean, I'm a big fan of Akaya Saka, uh, England's player of the year, right? He plays on the right side of a front three for Arsenal. Gareth Southgate puts him yesterday, sorry, on Friday as a left wing back. I mean, how does that make sense if we're picking players 
on how their club, how they play for their clubs and their form. How are you playing Bukaya Saka as a left wing back? Yeah, it doesn't really make sense. And this is what I'm saying. I think you're, Gareth's putting more unnecessary pressure on himself because if you play a team like Saka, who played Reese James almost in the midfield as well, like why change these deep players that are doing well for their club? Give them a chance, play them in their position. And I think when you lose a game in that way, I mean, Italy are a good team, let's be honest, but we've lost against teams that are nowhere near at our standards, you know, in the Nations League. So I think you're asking for trouble when you play players. Like, why play Saka in that position like a wing-back? He's not played there for about two years. He's playing well for Arsenal in a front three, then play him there. So, and we all know what Harry Kane can do. That, for me, like, is a no-brainer. We know that. I like Jude Bellingham. I think, for me, he has to start. But again, I think during the Euros, we all thought we were the England manager, didn't we? I was like, Jack Grealish needs to be playing. Then when we got to the final, I was like, actually, in Gareth, we trust because it is hard managing at international level. We all thought we were the England manager. Oh, we should play this formation in the Euros, we went all the way to the final and we nearly won. So, and I don't want to be that nearly team, but realistically, we have good enough players. It's about playing them in the right position. And I worry that I don't think we have a plan B or C. Even in the Euros, when Harry Kane had poor start to the Euros, didn't he? The first two games, he was pretty poor. Calvert-Lewin wasn't even in the squad in one of the games. He didn't even bring him on for two minutes in a game. So you need people that are back up. What happens if one of our players gets injured? We've seen in previous tournaments, Wayne Rooney, David Beckham, all of our players at some moments seem to get injured and then there's all this pressure and no one seems to be able to come in and do the job. So I think Gareth's putting a lot of unnecessary pressure on himself because you know what the media is like, they're going to come for them as they are at this moment in time. Yeah, and I guess that pressure is going to be ramped up, right, if they lose to, to Germany this evening. Um, Jonathan, put your manager's hat on for me. When you look at the back five, and that's, I guess, the Achilles heel for England right now, that defence, isn't it? Going forward in the midfield, the talent's there, the depth's there. Who, who starts in that back five for you? Well, John Stones is a is an absolute cert. Um, I, I'd, I'd have to start Tamari. I, honestly, I really like him in international level as well. He's got the pace, and then on the left hand side, then it, it's who who can play in that role, who can play a left side centre back. It looks like it's going to be Maguire. It does, even though he's not playing. It looks like it's going to be him. And then your right wing back, you've got an abundance of talent. Reese James, probably one of the best in the world. Carl Walker again. Then you've got Trent Alexander-Arnold, Trippier. And you've got four top, top wing-backs. So who can play there? Who knows? Left-hand side is, is slightly more different with Chilwell being out uh, last season with his crew sheet just coming back. And Shaw's not even playing at Man United. So again, it, 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 it's, a, it's, a, it's a balancing act to what Gareth Southgate can do and what he thinks should play. But for me, that left-hand side now with Maguire not playing and Shaw not playing is a huge concern. We spoke about last week, didn't we, about what I thought my head and my heart was telling me two different things. And I was saying that I felt like Maguire will play for Gareth Southgate, regardless if he's playing in Europa League for Man United. He seems to be that player that Gareth Southgate will play no matter what. I agree. I said Tamori I thought should play, but I don't think Gareth Southgate will do that. He doesn't really fancy Chilwell, in my opinion. He's not, he wasn't even in the squad the other day. And even in the Euros, he didn't play, did he? I know they had the COVID and that type of stuff, but he doesn't seem to fancy Chilwell in that position. And we have an abundance of talent. We do in those positions, but really, do we need to go to a tournament picking like eight defenders, realistically? I'd rather us picking, you know, centre forward. We don't need to go to tournaments with so many fullbacks. Unfortunately, we don't. And for me, I'd rather play Kyle Walker at centre-back than play a player like Harry Maguire. I just would. Kyle Walker can play there. He's played there for City when he's been called upon. I mean, we've even seen Kyle Walker going goal, so clearly he can play anywhere. <laughs> you know, in the press conference after that Italian game, Southgate did say this was a step in the right direction. I mean, I personally don't see how this is a step in the right direction when you've had an abysmal Nations League campaign, you're playing players out of form. But can we take any positives whatsoever from that performance against Italy? Without doubt, Bellingham, I thought he was absolutely outstanding in that game. Some part of Foden's game as well. I think with Jude Bellingham, I think he's going to be the mainstay in this England team for many, many years. He's an absolutely outstanding talent, box to box player, playing at Dortmund. I think he captained Dortmund last week. I mean, can you imagine that? And his for his age, captain in a, a side with that magnitude. I think he was the main, main plus. Like I say, I think he was brilliant in the game, but I think for me, there was more negatives than pluses. Any positives for you at all, Ian? Honestly, I agree with Jonathan, you know, Jude Bellingham, but I don't think, I think managers sometimes you just want them to be honest, a little bit more honest and just say, you know, it just wasn't good enough. This is no, we're nowhere near where we need to be at for the tournament, but we're going to make things better and we're going to make it better. There's no need to panic. I don't think it's panic mode yet. 
because I think we have the tendency to get a bit carried away in England when it's going well. We think we're going to win a World Cup. When it, we lose a few games, we think we're the worst team in the world. There's no balance sometimes, especially with the media. But I don't think we need to be saying we take, take positives from the game because we lost. And it's how you lose, isn't it? Like, we don't seem to be progressing. We seem to have gone backwards. Since we were in the European Championship final last summer against Italy, I was thinking, I was buzzing. I've never felt that way. I cried three times during that game. During the National Anthem, <laughs> Luke Shaw, and when we lost, I cried, right, at Wembley. I stood there for ages. I was in a bit of a daze, right? I genuinely thought we were going to win. I felt like it was a good feeling. And then after that, I felt like everybody still was feeling that buzz. And now I feel like the buzz is almost going because we haven't been playing that well. It's weird. If we went and beat Germany, it wouldn't surprise me in the slightest. And it's all roses again. Harry Maguire plays well if he plays. You know, if we beat Germany tonight, the last few games are maybe forgotten about because you beat a top team in Germany. Unless Harry Maguire is like superhuman, but during the Euro, do you remember when Ming started the first two games because Harry Maguire was injured? And then Harry Maguire actually came into the European Championship team and got in the best 11. And he hadn't been playing, he'd just been injured. So maybe he does have the ability that I never had, where if you're not match fit, you know what it's like, Jonathan. If you're not, you can run on a treadmill, you can go for runs, you can do that. But if you're not playing in games, you just don't have that sharpness. And I feel like he's susceptible to a mistake. Everybody, I mean, I don't agree with people booing him at all. I don't know where that has even come from. But at the same time, it's like he's almost become a bit more of a scapegoat. And I do worry for him because he looks liable to a mistake when he plays for Man United. But when he plays for England, he doesn't really look as bad as he does for United. But I still think, again, the pressure will be there. The pressure will be there if he starts as well. Uh, England had a good record against Germany recently. They haven't lost in five years, obviously, we go back to the Euros where they won as well. Um, if they do lose, though, to Germany, it will be their longest run without a win since 1958. We talk about the pressure on Gareth Southgate. There will be a huge amount of pressure if they don't beat Germany. All right, go on. Uh, no offence in predictions for tonight's game. England versus Germany almost becomes a must-win game. We're ready for Gareth Southgate. What are you thinking? I'll start with you, Jonathan. 2-0. Don't ask me Ooh, why. Confident. I, I, I just think, I think they will win this game. I think they will. Um, home crowd will help them and they need a result. The players in that dressing room must be thinking we need to get back on track. There's a lot of pressure on the players now. There's a lot of pressure on Gareth Southgate. He's England manager. There's going to be a lot of pressure, but I fancy to win 2-0. I'm going to go England 2-1. I can't root against us. Even though my head and my heart are telling me two different things. Against Germany, I always want us to win. So I'm going to go 2-1 England, but we definitely have to step it up. Yeah, we definitely have to win this game, don't we? Uh, especially leading into the World Cup. And fingers crossed, Kairo Tomori gets a couple of minutes on the pitch as well as Ivan Tony. Look, we will reflect on that performance on the Design Soccer Show next week. Leanne, really appreciate you coming on. Jonathan, thank you so much as well.